This is the Brother Henry and You Show, where you can be inspired, uplifted, and edified through the Word of God. Now enjoy today's program. Praise the Lord. God bless you, my friends. Welcome to the Brother Henry and You Show. I am your host, Brother Henry Harris. We're here to inspire, uplift, and edify the body of Christ. And I'm so glad you're taking this opportunity to watch today. We have such an awesome, beyond awesome program for you today. Uh, we have a great man of God here today. Uh, his name is Pastor Lewis Threaton. He is the pastor of Glorious Grace Fellowship in Rogers, Arkansas. He's also the founder of Word of Life Ministry. What an honor and privilege. Good to be here. To right have here. you today. Um, I got in on a little of the service and he was operating the prophetic. I think that's neat. I think we need to see more of that in the church. What do you think? I think I think there is a restoration of the prophetic coming in this hour. Amen. I really do. God is God is God is in fact raising up all of the fivefold ministry mm -hmm. to work together mm -hmm. in order to see the body of Christ really be built up. Amen. Why should the fivefold ministry be operating in our churches? Because I, I I understand they're not operating in many churches, but why is it important that the fivefold ministry needs to be in operations of the church? The well, scripture says it's important because we grow up when these ministries flow and work together. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you take, for example, a pastoral ministry that isn't related to the apostolic and the prophetic and the evangelistic mm -hmm. and the teaching, it's very limited in its scope of what it can do mm -hmm. For that particular body, but when you add the apostolic, when you add the prophetic, when you add the evangelistic, when you add the teaching, then the scripture says we can all grow up together and move into the unity that God placed in the body of Christ to begin with. And more than that, it's something that God released and set within the church. Amen. When did you give your life to the Lord? Well, I was saved when I was very young. My, I, my father was a Southern Baptist pastor, mm -hmm. and uh, when I was about six, mm -hmm. I accepted Jesus as my Lord mm -hmm. and Savior and had a, you know, a nominal relationship with the Lord. And then uh, I married a Pentecostal girl in 1960. Uh, six. I like how you said Pentecostal. Yeah. Girl. <laughs> and, uh, and and I was I was a Southern Baptist pastor in, here in Anderson, Missouri, and uh, she came and sang in the sunrise service, and we met and fell in love and got married. And she had the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I didn't, and I watched her life for seven years. Mm. Realized she had something that I didn't have. Mm. And our, my oldest child, my daughter, got sick. And for the first time, I confronted something I, I couldn't fix. Mm -hmm. And so that drove me to a place of true uh, intercession to the Lord. And a uh, friend, of, friend of my wife sent me a little book called The Holy Spirit's Work in Baptist Today mm -hmm. back in the early part of 1973. Mm -hmm. And I began to read that and mm -hmm. realize it was something more mm -hmm. than what I had. Mm -hmm. and, while she was getting prepped for a surgery the next morning, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit in June of, uh, of 1973 uh, in front of the St. Francis Hospital in Tulsa, Oklahoma, <laughs> in my car. <laughs> I've heard people that receive it in the restrooms, in the shower. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. It's Once a, you just yield to the yeah. Lord, He'll fill you. Amen. He truly, truly will. That's how this journey began. Six since that time, we planted a number of churches and mm -hmm. uh, moved prophetically. The first gift the Lord released to me mm -hmm. was uh, the prophetic gift, uh, mm -hmm. fun functioning through word of knowledge and word of wisdom in, in a prophetic flow. Mm -hmm. and, and hugely, when I minister to someone, the Lord begins with something in their past where he has brought them from to the present, what he is doing in their life, and then the prophetic for the future, what as they yield to the Lord, he will do. Amen. We understand all all prophecy is conditional, mm -hmm. you know, and so the Lord we must respond to it in a faith-filled, positive way, just as we respond to the Word of God Amen. in order to see it come to pass. Just because God declares something doesn't necessarily mean that it's 
it's going to come to pass. He gives you a will yeah. to obey what he's what he's saying, yeah. even though the condition might not be there in the prophetic word. It's always there behind the scene. Amen. So therefore, when God gives a person to give a word, faith must be involved. Yeah. Because if you know, if God speaks to you concerning something about me. Uh, physically, with my physical eyes, I may not see it right mm -hmm. then and there, but through faith, I need to believe what God mm -hmm. just said, and it'll come through, like to my yeah. condition. A lot yeah. of times, when God speaks to people, oh, it's gonna happen tomorrow, mm -hmm. you know, and then they get discouraged. Really does it happen they get discouraged. Yeah. They say, oh, I wonder if God really said that. You know, it, it takes sometimes it's a, a process, you yeah. know. Well, you have to have faith on the part of the individual giving it, that yeah. it is God, mm -hmm. and faith on the part of the person receiving it, and then a seeking of the Lord, well, what what may be the unstated conditions mm -hmm. of all of this? Mm -hmm. you know? Scripture says in Jeremiah, at what instant I shall say to an individual, or, or even to a nation, mm -hmm. I, I will build you up and plant you mm -hmm. and... Uh, bring good in your life. If that nation turn from me, mm -hmm. then I will repent of that that I have declared. It's mm -hmm. something declared, but the condition is there. And then it said, what instant I say, I'm going to bring destruction to this nation. If that nation or if that individual repent and turn to me, then I will release my blessing into that situation or Amen. into that person. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, is there a difference uh, between um, a word of knowledge uh, and a prophet? The reason why I say that because every person that gives a prophecy, a lot of people say, oh, that's a prophet. But does that mean they walk in the office of a prophet just because they gave a prophecy? No. When you see, the prophet is one of the fivefold ministry mm -hmm. gifts. Mm -hmm. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can give prophetic utterance and not be a prophet. Sort of like uh, uh, the, the, the man that had the four virgin daughters mm -hmm. that did prophesy. Mm -hmm. And then the prophet Agabus came. Mm -hmm. And the scriptures brings a clear distinction between the two. The mm -hmm. four virgin daughters that prophesied gave true words of the Lord. But then when the prophet came, there was a different kind of an anointing. The prophetic anointing uh, is like any of the others, apostle, prop, uh, evangelist, teacher, or that. It is the gift, and the word is doma. Mm -hmm. And it means the value of that gift is in of itself. It's resident mm -hmm. within the individual. God places something there. Uh, prophecy is just something God brings at a moment and releases. Uh, the, even though I operate as a prophet, I have to depend on the gift of prophecy mm -hmm. to come at any given time. And mm -hmm. sometimes, the, you know, you, you'll, you'll minister. I'll minister to 15 or 20 people, and that gifting will leave and mm -hmm. or just lift, and I'll have to, have to stop. And it, it depends, you know. I've, I've ministered to a group of pastors uh, one time for three and a half hours, just one right after one right after another That's amazing. and uh, because you know people had released their faith for everyone to be ministered to Amen. a prophet has been identified as a mouthpiece someone who God speaks mm -hmm. through right um, you personally when the Lord speaks to you how does he do it um, is it an audible voice is it something that a whisper mm -hmm. it, it's been identified different what yeah each heart. person each person has it different when when the Lord it's amazing when the Lord ministers to me, uh, usually He will give me a phrase mm -hmm. for a person mm -hmm. or a phrase for a general prophetic word. Mm -hmm. As a, as I step out with that phrase, then He begins to add to that. The nearest I can explain it to you, and I don't listen a lot to mm -hmm. the words that's coming out of my mouth because mm -hmm. I listen to the Spirit. Mm -hmm. If I concentrate on what I have said, I miss what he's saying. Mm -hmm. So as he's putting it in, I'm speaking it out. And as I'm speaking that out, he's putting the next thing in. Amen. And so it's sort of that flow that comes from the Father, from the Spirit of God, out. 
And that, that's, that's the way it functions to me. I, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with a man that he saw the first lines uh, like in a vision. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the prophets in the scripture, Ezekiel had a different way of prophesying. He saw visions and saw things mm -hmm. where Jeremiah heard the word of the Lord and spoke mm -hmm. and declared the word, the word of the Lord. And it still functions that way today. I think the Lord works with what with the kind of makeup that we have. Right, amen. I have a couple more questions. Uh, okay. As a man of God, as a prophet, when you're doing these services, do you feel a pull in your spirit? Like in the audience, can, can you like feel a pull like the, in your spirit? Like that person needs a word from God? Or, or yeah. can you look at a person and just tell, man, <laughs> I don't know what to try. It, work, it, work, yeah, it works different ways. Uh, I've gone into services where uh, where the church has been praying and they're believing that everybody in their church is going to be ministered to prophetically. Mm -hmm. And and because of their faith, God God honors that. I go into others where, you know, I just I just see a person and the Lord just says minister to that person and that's another way it happens sometimes the Lord might say just minister to that person mm -hmm. and when I walk over there then the Lord gives me something but there is definitely a draw mm -hmm. it's sort of like uh, lightning mm -hmm. comes from the draw of the earth mm -hmm. it comes down and some people just have a, a, a draw mm -hmm. of course we got to understand the purpose of prophecy is for edification, exhortation, and comfort. That's the mm -hmm. general purpose of general prophecy. Mm -hmm. it, it should contain those things in the prophetic. Amen. You are the pastor of um, Glorious Grace Fellowship. My last question is, okay. what is your vision uh, for that church and your ministry in general? Okay. Our ministry in general is to raise up people and release them into ministry. Mm -hmm. It's, it's been that way since 1974 when we planted our first church. And uh, it, if, if I can invest myself into someone like, like yourself and not make them a carbon copy of me, but realize there is a unique gift in, in them. It, it, it's sort of like there is a unique gift in you. God has released you in this hour to do this kind of ministry, to bring an awareness to the general body of Christ and an awareness to people that aren't even believers that will tap into this, this broadcast and bring them to a place where they can personally receive from the Lord Jesus Christ. And your yieldedness and your willing, willing to step out in faith is going to be richly rewarded in the days to come. I received that. Bless you, bless you. God bless you too. And you said the vision for our church, it is to raise up people and to invest in them so that they can go on and do the work of the ministry. Amen. God bless you. Pastor bless you. three from Glorious Grace Fellowship, Rogers, Arkansas. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you in our prayers. Have a blessed week. Bye-bye.